Right, hello. You've guessed by the title, more Madonna nonsense. Um, I've got to show you this one. If something happened and I didn't bother to do this video, I'd be like kicking myself, you know. Probably nothing will happen, but I wanted to show you this interesting number um, within this chart here, okay? So this is the Queen's Cross chart. Go see previous videos for information on this. If you are new, um, if not, and you've been following along with this crazy journey, um, you know, what, what do I even say? Um, what I have here, obviously, the numbers that were, like, more significant in here, we're looking for patterns, and, you know, obviously, the, the main cross comes across this way and down here, so we're looking at numbers that fall around those lines there, okay? What I have done is I have added in the actual numbers of pi, the first 24 digits. This is it in order right here, as you can see, 3.14, yada, yada, yada. And then the green line here, just above, this is it being adjusted to start at the center of the table here, okay? And the reason why we pick these numbers, these pi numbers, is because the way this chart is built, it also has a set of Fibonacci type numbers which start with, coincidentally, with the numbers 314 at the start of the cycle. And that just happens to be right here. Okay. As we can see. Now, for other reasons, this isn't at the center of this table right here. But what we do have at the center of the table, which you will find interesting, is the recent numbers for the eclipse. Okay. And so this links in again with or synchronizes as you look down the table with the with the numbers of pi. OK, now let me explain a couple of little things with Madonna and the numbers of pi and the numbers associated with Pluto. Um, if you go back and watch one of my videos sometime in January, I did a video called Pluto is 9-11 or 9-11 is Pluto, I can't remember the exact title, but it's something like that, back in January. And in that video I explain um, some number jumps that occur within the set of Lucas numbers. And what is interesting about that is that the is that 814 is like the big number that comes out of that for Pluto. And it ties in with 9-11, and of course 9-11 ties in with 2-18, etc. If you go watch that video, it will help explain this tremendously, okay? Um, but this 814, super duper interesting, okay, as a sort of birthday for Pluto. You can notice that these are the same numbers here with the, with the 814. Um, that we could we could write that a little bit differently one four eight and put a point in here and now we have the difference in the orbital duration uh, between Pluto and the Sun okay so we can get some you know there's a lot of interesting stuff with that previous video go watch it uh, it's interesting, but if we go from this start date, which is the 14th of August, which happens to be just two days away from uh, Madonna's birthday. Now, and there's some, just some, it's just totally interesting stuff to do with 9-11 repeating in certain cycles. And also, uh, so that tie back with Pluto with that. And then her birthday also does that same repeating type interesting things you know stuff that I've covered um, ages ago but I mean it's just it's fascinating anyway I'm getting sidetracked what we need to know though is if we go from 814 back in 1958 the same year two days prior to Madonna being born okay and we do this number jump right here that's in pi okay um, which is coincidentally enough right above 9-11 here, which is rather interesting. Um, and we just go backwards here to 23,979 days 
from that date, if we jump 23,979 days from this date, 1958, it's going to take us to the eclipse this year. Okay, so this is pretty, you know, this connection is pretty interesting to say the least. Now, if we go from Madonna's birthday, what is interesting, with that same number jump, we're going to be, get rid of this crud. If we go from her birthday, and we do that same number jump, we are going to be at 410. Now, on the clock in Back to the Future, right, <laughs> this is when the clock stops. Okay, we just got to read that backwards again, 1004. Or reversed. We've got to read the 10 first, then the 4. So um, we we'll read the date as uh, the 10th of April. Okay, so 10:04. Now we have the date for when the clock stops, or the, the date, the, the time the clock stops in Back to the Future. Okay. Now what's interesting about this is that the clock began ticking on a certain date. It was started on a certain date. And in Back to the Future, that date is, if I, as long as I'm getting this right, I'm pretty sure I am, was um, the 5th of September, 9-5, okay? 9-5, you know, 9-1-5 <laughs> and all those different combinations with 9-5. Uh, very interesting, to say the least. But this is the time when the clock starts, okay? So stop and reset. So both those numbers you could look at as a stop and a start point, in essence, um, because, you know, the beginning is the end. But anyway, uh, what's interesting about this date is the twin date for this date, if we look at the other side of the year this year, is the 26th of April. Now, what is super fascinating about that whole scene in Back to the Future is that the frisbee is thrown, the pie, the pie dish, yeah, occurs in that scene at the dance, okay? So we have that reference to pie in there, okay? Another interesting thing, um, uh, is that if we now look at this date, Right. I don't want to get sidetracked on other stuff in Back to the Future right now. If we look at this, um, if we look at this date now, you'll see that it shows up somewhere, and it shows up down here. And this is why I really wanted to do the video because I'm like, well, it's right at. This is the beginning here, three fourteen of pi, okay, and here is the end point. So this is right at the changeover, again, the beginning and the end. Yeah, this is when the clock starts in Back to the Future, <laughs> you know, and 410 with that number jump there from her birthday is when the clock stopped, okay? So I, that's what I wanted to show you, you know, that the 26th of April, you could pull it out of here, it's right before the beginning of Pi again, the beginning is the end. Okay, and that all ties in with Pluto, it ties in with 9-11, it ties in with this, map, you know, with this huge date for this eclipse. Um, everything ties together. Okay, I, I don't know what else to say other than there it is. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. What you'll also notice is that this green row of pi right here, actual pi, and look at the row above that starts with 9-11. You'll notice that those two, num those two rows synchronize at the eclipse date numbers again, 8-4. Okay? Fascinating stuff. And then right above here, we have the actual Queen's death. Okay? The 8th of September for QE2. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Notice the 718 number above as well. Okay. Oh, dear. Yeah. 
Um, I saw some stuff. I've, I've just been seeing some interesting Sean Penn synchronicities. I don't know why. Maybe that's the reason why, because, of course, Sean Penn's birthday is the day after Madonna's, um, 8.17, if I'm getting that right. So, again, fascinating stuff, fascinating stuff. And we got the, yeah, the 187 in there as well for the murder, death, kill number. I'm leaving it there. That's got to be enough. If something happens, I'll do, I'll do a better video on this, but I just can't be bothered. Like I said in that last video, there's, there's quite a lot of dates um, running right now that have good, have really good synchronicities, I think. Um, that's all I can say about it, really. It's, uh, it's kind of just, it's just luck if you pick the right one, basically. That's what I'd say. Anyway, um, yeah, let's just leave it there. All right, cheers. Thanks for watching. All right, bye.